Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. In this one, we are going to see page transitions, which is a feature inside Nextbricks that is quite powerful, but it is also very important to understand the basics in order to use them properly. So yeah, we're going to see this whole panel inside the builder, um, some Barbage's concepts like container and wrapper, which is the library, but it's transitions is built on top. So yeah, the first thing we need to do is set up the playground where we are going to do the page transitions. Okay, so this is a blank installation I have created. Um, I have only created here some pages just before the video. Frequently asked questions from pricing and they are completely blank. And well, these are the pages we are going to use um, to build the page transitions. And I have also installed here bricks and next bricks. So the first thing I'm going to do is enable next UI. This is optional, you can just disable this, but I like to use it. And let's enable also page transitions. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to go to home. And instead of creating a whole website here from scratch, I'm going to just pick a template from next bricks. Um, maybe this one, template six. Copy and paste here. Okay, nice. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is create a header here, the header of my website. And I'm going to put here um, the sticky header that comes with the template and also a cursor so that it can be shared among all pages. I'm going to delete this one and this one. And now I'm going to divide the whole template into the pricing and frequently asked questions. So I'm pasting the pricing here and I'm going to give it some background, a dark one, and the same for frequently asked questions. And my background here. Okay, now I can delete these ones. Okay, nice. Okay, nice. Now I'm going to create also the app here. I'm going to create the home and link it to the home. And same for the pricing and frequently asked questions. Okay, nice. Now I'm going to close the header. Okay, perfect. Now the whole website is built, so we can start working with page transitions now. So let's open page transitions panel here. And this is what we have. Okay, so the most important thing about page transitions, and I would say this is the concept most people struggle with when working with them is the difference between container and wrapper. Um, the container is the element where I'm going to put all the elements that will be updated when going from one page to another. So in this case, I'm targeting the main. So everything inside the main will be updated. Now, the wrapper is the element where I'm going to put all the content that is going to be updated and that is not going to be updated. So let's say uh, I'm targeting the main here. So everything inside the main will be updated. If I have a header, it will be outside the main, but inside the body. So that header won't be updated. Um, this is uh, quite important in order to build the animations and the page transitions themselves. For example, um, if I want to have all this hero section updated, this hero should be inside my container. But if I want to have this header not being updated when going from one page to another, let's say I have a simple fade on the body and the header needs to remain stuck there, 
then that header will be outside the container but inside the wrapper. If you understood everything correctly, I mean the difference between container and wrapper, you should now already know that all the elements we need to animate inside our animations and that will make up the page transition animation, they all need to be outside the container and inside the wrapper so that they won't be updated. Now, in Bricks, these elements have to be inside the header or inside a footer. We can't build, um, like if we are building a normal website in HTML um, where we could just put a div outside the main. This is not the way WordPress works. So we need to build our page transition. I recommend it inside the header. So now I'm going to close page transitions panel. Let's save here and let's go to the header. Now, this whole header won't be updated when going from one page to another. So all my elements that will make the page transition animation need to go here, okay? So what I wanted to build for this video was a simple slide. So let's put a block here um, and let's give it, um, let's say slide wrapper and let's give it some styles. I mean, minimum height of 100 device height, 100% width. And let's give it also a background, a light gray one, for example. And let's make it fixed also so that when we go from one page to another and the user scrolls, this remains stuck there. A high theta index. And let's put it also here, top zero, left zero. And let's put some content inside also. Let's put a heading here. And my custom slide, for example. Let's give you some typography. I like to use Fig Tree font family. Like this, for example, um, some negative letter spacing, a bigger weight. Okay, so now I'm going to center this heading right there. Okay, so I'm going to open again page transitions panel and let's start making here our animation. But I'm going to explain first the rest of properties we have here. Um, path from and path to are just properties to define a custom path. In case we build here uh, many page transitions for custom pages and we could define paths here and the pages would have a custom page transition. This is not the case as I'm loading this page transition everywhere, but if you want paths, you could define them here. Um, then we have the weight property, but we are going to see this later uh, once we have the animations built. Um, so let's start building animations. I'm going to target my slide here and I'm going to give it first uh, some left here um, a minus 100% left this is a slide so I want it to come from left for example and let's give it one second duration an expo easing and animate it to a left zero so that it comes to the viewport Okay, so we could we can see it here. There it is. And I'm going to animate the enter animation. I'm going to explain it now what is the leave and what is the enter. But I'm going to give one second duration an exposing and I'm going to animate it to a hundred percent left. Okay, let's see what we build here. Okay, perfect. Now, what is a leaf animation and an enter animation? A leaf animation is the animation that will play when going from one page to another, okay? So when I click 
uh, than a victim like the pressing, this is what we'll play, okay? And it will remain here. This is the leaf animation. Write what we'll play when we leave the page. And once we leave the page and the next page is ready, then the entire animation will play this, okay? Well, now that we have finished our page transition, let's go to the front end and let's see if it worked. I'm going to save the panel here, the builder also, and let's go to the home page. Um, let's go to pricing and there it is. My slide, let's go to frequently asked questions. Perfect. Now, there is another property here, the weight property. And this property, uh, in this property we can define the duration we want to set once the next page is ready, but we don't want the entire animation to play yet. So this is like a an interval there uh, where the page transition will stick until this duration has end. So for example, if I define five seconds here, let's save it and let's reload this and go to the pricing. Now the next page is ready, but it is waiting five seconds here. And there it is. Well, so that was a uh, page transitions in action. Um, it was a simple slide, but um, it was just an example. You can create here um, the page transition you want. It has endless possibilities. There are a lot of properties here. You can even define your custom ones here. Um, create as many animations as you want. Uh, all these properties are here also. Mm, it is quite powerful. Uh, but I also wanted to share as a bonus um, a very common use case that I have seen a lot. Um, that is setting the next page title as the as the heading. So I'm going to put the slide here, left zero, so that we can see it better. Um, let's say I want to show the next page title right here. If I go from pricing to fag, uh, or for, from frequently asked questions to home, I want to display here fag or home. So how can I update um, this heading here? Well, uh, there are a lot of, of possibilities to do so. The one I like that is quite lightweight, uh, a very few lines of code. This is, this is a very simple script. Uh, I'm going to put it on the description of the video. And it is about setting the uh, nap item text content as the slide heading text content. So let's say I'm going to give this class to the slide heading and also the nap item heading class to the nap items. And here. Okay, so now when I go to, sorry, uh, I have to put minus 100% here. Well, so now the if I go, if I want to go from frequently asked questions to pricing, now it is going to display the nav items text as the slide heading. If I go to frequently asked questions, the same and home. Well, that was the video, guys. I hope you like it, that uh, it was useful for you. Page transitions is not a simple concept. It's, I would say it's one of the most advanced things you can go with when building websites. I try to make it simple with an interface inside Nextbricks, but still people struggle with uh, the container and wrapper concepts. So yeah, I hope this video helps to clarify things.